exception qualified joint venture a, a qjv so if you and your spouse each materially participate as uh, as the only members of a jointly owned and operated business and you file a joint return for the tax year you can make a joint election to be treated as a qjv otherwise known as a qualified joint venture instead of a partnership for the tax year so you think that might be another way that you can deal with this which might be a little bit more easy or easier than filing the separate partnership tax return having the k-1s and the flow throughs which will be more complicated and more costly if you have someone else helping you with that or even if you're just buying software to do that so making this election will allow you to avoid the complexity of form 1065 but still give you still give each uh, spouse credit for social security earnings on which retirement benefits are based so you might think this whole thing like why why do i need this whole thing because the federal the taxes are going to basically come out the same oftentimes or possibly when are the taxes going to not come out or you know and again one of the main things that we need to deal isn't the federal income taxes it's the social security which is allocated by social security number which will have an impact not only on the taxes that you're paying in but also in terms of who's going to get the benefit because the benefits aren't provided by married couple but rather by individual social security number so for an explanation of marital participation you could see instructions for schedule c form 1040 line g uh, this also by the way is an area where you might end up with some tax planning type strategies in other words if you had two people that were married for example and one spouse has the sole proprietor business and the other spouse possibly was a a homekeeper taking care of the home then the second spouse hasn't been paying into social security and therefore might get very little or no social security benefits at retirement and the person that's paying into social security might be paying the maximum in already and not getting any more added benefit in the form of benefits at the point of retirement by paying a lot more into social security so so the, in those situations the question is well could one spouse participate in the business if you have both spouses working in the business would it then be in some way shape or form possible to have the spouse that's not having and that doesn't have a lot of benefits that they're going to get at social security to allocate more of the contributions to them which might have an impact in the future with regards to the benefit calculations that they're going to get at the point of retirement so that gets quite complex because because when you put money into social security it's going to have an impact on how they're going to calculate things the laws could change over time uh, as well and then and then when you so then the question is you know how, is there some way that you can set up your scenario so that people are working in such a way that they're paying into social security to maximize the benefits which will be paid out based on how much was paid in not according to married couple but by individual social security number caution only businesses that are owned and operated by spouses as co-owners and not in the name of uh, a state law entity qualify for the election thus a business owned and operated by spouses through an llc does not qualify for the elective of a uh, qjv so we talked about before like llcs are an attempt to get the benefits of like both worlds right so in other words when you have an uh, a sole proprietor you have more liability uh no liability protection uh less separation between your business and personal entity possibly a greater ability to get sued and and have your personal assets subject to that one way to try to get liability to protection is to have a separate legal entity which used to be a c corporation but the problem with the c corporation is double taxation taking the money out in the form of dividends resulting possibly in income as well as being taxed on the corporate level so then you have flow through entities to try to get around that to get the best of both worlds which take the form of possibly s corporations and limited liability companies which typically have a separate uh, return that needs to be filed however no tax at that level 
rather having K-1s flow through to the individual tax returns in a similar way as a partnership to be taxed on the individual level. And then with the limited liability companies, which are usually taxed in a similar way as a partnership, you might have a single member LLC that was set up, which could cause you the problem here. Because if it was set up as a single member LLC, then within the setup process, it's a single member. But sometimes those, if, if they weren't a married couple, might be able to be reported as a Schedule C or just on a Schedule C rather than having a separate tax return that flows through. But it might muddy up the process to try to make a single member LLC if you have two members, even though those two members are now a married couple, right? So that's something to be mindful of. So to make this election, you must divide all items of income, gain, loss, deduction, and credit attributable to the business between you and your spouse in accordance with your respective interest in the venture. Now, this is kind of a pain to do to, to basically uh, break, you know, to allocate that all out on uh, the tax return. 